with great honor and responsibility that I come before you in the name of Jesus. And I want for the word of God to speak life into every single person. If you don't understand, dacă nu înțelegeți, vă rugăm să luați ceva cărți și să, hopefully, we can translate și în românește. Ok? I want to continue what uh, our brother Levi started. Psalm 46.10 says, Be still and know I'm God. And so I want us in the quietness of the busyness of our world, to be still this time, as he's mentioned, and to think of what Christ has done for us. But while we, we, while we are still in this moment of waiting, there is something that we must do and take a hold of. And I want to encourage you. Looking at this text, we see the suffering of Jesus The suffering of our Lord and our Savior at the hands of people on the street, average people. The Bible says that they walked on by and they, you know, accused him and abused him uh, and saying, you, you know, you, you're going to destroy the temple in three days and build it. And he says, if you are the son of God and mocking the Savior of the world. Then you see the priests coming along and all these people and they're declaring and they're saying, they're speaking into what they do not know. So many times people speak rubbish. Why? Because they do not know or have the faith to know. And so I want to challenge us in this evening that we understand that the words that these people said, They were, whether they're influenced, but it's important to understand where do you put your faith? We know that Jesus died. Hallelujah. Amen. He died and he rose again. And we're going to celebrate that on Sunday. Praise God. But before then, I want us to look and when we look at this, we need to ask ourselves the question as was mentioned before. But I want to challenge us. Who do we put our faith in? Do we put our faith in what we know or do we put our faith in the Jesus and the word of God that speaks life? Who do you put your faith in? And so I encourage you tonight that you put your faith in Jesus and his word, this holy word. This is life everlasting. Do we believe the word? Come on, I didn't hear you. Do we believe the word? Amen. Amen. That's what I want to hear. The word of God is power. It is power to transform. And so we need to come and believe this. And so I look at this. And the first thing that comes to my mind, I say, you know what? The father of all lies, the devil, influences. And therefore he says, what does he say? If you are. You know, these people are walking on by. And they're saying, if you are the son of God. How interesting. When Jesus was tempted, what did the devil say? If you are the son of God. If you are. And so what we see is that there is doubt. The people around, they don't know the truth. But I'll tell you what, they're causing doubt. Now, we have faith. Listen to me very carefully. Each and every one of you. Fiecare din noi avem credință. Yeah, listen very carefully. But the question is, where do you put your faith? Do you put your faith in Jesus that says yes and amen? Or do you say He can't do that. That's too big for God. God can't do that. See, you put in your faith. Where are you channeling your faith? And I want to encourage you that you do not point in the lack of provision, in the I can't, I will not, but in Jesus through all things who are possible. Hallelujah. And so we put our faith in Him. You see these people, they twisted the Word of God. They said, you know, this is the one that God loves. <laughs> If God really loves him, then why is he there? You see, they twist the word of God. And there are people that will twist the word of God. And so we need to be vigilant. It says in the end times, there will be what? Deceiving spirits. And we need to be vigilant to see this. Now, as we move along. We see what takes place, you know, and they accuse him and they curse him and they say, uh, you can't even save yourself if you really are the son of God. And not realizing that 
he chose not to save himself. Think about this, beloved. All you who hear this word. He chose Jesus, our Lord and Saviour, the God from heaven who came down to this earth. He chose to stay on that cross. When people spat, when people cursed, when he was completely thrown to the ground and nailed to that cross, he chose. It was a decision. And they said it was a weakness. You see, the world looks at us and says, what's wrong with you? Why do you believe in something like this? You go to church? How many days? You tell them and they say, we're going to church on Thursday and Friday. Hallelujah. Sunday twice, Monday. What's wrong with you? The question is, what's wrong with them? Not what's wrong with us. We've got the life of Jesus in us. Hallelujah. And we've got the, the reason to be rejoiced, the good news of the gospel, the power of God unto our salvation. And so we need to be careful because I tell you what, these people, listen very carefully. When you read this, you see the power of words has influence. Cuvintele noastre are o influență extrem de mare. Why? As these people said these things, pay very close attention, very, very close attention. It says in verse 44, that the robbers, the ones that were with Jesus on the cross, both of them, do you know what they said? They, they said the same thing. They cursed Jesus. Whew. What about the one that, yeah, you, we all know that, hey, one of them gave their lives to God. Matthew doesn't record it, right? But we know that one of them gave their lives to God. But what I'm trying to say is the power of influence can change your mind. Who are you putting your confidence, and I'm coming back to this, who is your faith in? Because that thing that your faith is in will influence your life. Are you relying on God? Are you thirsty? Are you hungry? Are you desiring? Or are you finding another source and saying, you know what, this is okay. Yeah, look, I can't quite, I don't understand this, but I'm, 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 su I'm supplementing or I'm, I'm using something else. Because, you know, it's, it's not about that. I want to encourage you. I want us to understand that faith is critical. Faith is critical. You see, Jesus died to set a life for us. He died to give us life. Hallelujah. Do you know you're alive in Christ? Say an amen. Oh, come on. Are we alive? You look alive. But are you alive? Listen to me. You can look at me. You can smile at me. But only a real, alive person can live the way that God wants. And I tell you what, no one can show that. At times we can't see that. The Bible says by fruits. But I want to encourage you. I want you to understand this truth. If we are alive and we say we're alive and our body's alive, then we need to have faith with works. And I'm going to share, I want to share a little something. Before I start, do you know uh, if you say we're, we're children of God, amen? Amen? That's right. Oh, You've got, you got to start talking. If you don't, I'm going to push you. You need to talk. I'll tell you why. Because you need to glorify God. And if we are children of God, when you sign up to be a children of God, when you sign up to say, Lord, I want to follow you, do you know what happens? you got to come into the kingdom and the authority and the rule of the kingdom and the king. You know, when you join the army, what happens? When you want to become a Marine, uh, excuse me, officer, I wake up at nine. So uh, sorry, I can't wake up at four o'clock in the morning as everybody else because I just don't do that. <laughs> what? They will throw you straight out of bed. What do you mean? You signed up to hear. You sign up, you listen up. You get equipped. You get ready. You get fired up and you do what you're told. Oh, hang on a sec. My mama never told me that. But I tell you what, so many times we preach it like it's watered down, like it's a gospel that is cheap. And Jesus didn't die for a cheap gospel. Listen to me. He didn't die for a cheap gospel. He died to set us straight. And I tell you what, in the Word, it says, and I'm going to read it. Because so many of us, you know, we talk about signs and sometimes be very careful. Because we're afraid to, to even go there. You know, we don't want signs. We just want, we want to know that we're right with God and that's it. But I want to tell you something. This is the Word of God. Mark 16. Mark 16 says in verses 15. He says, he said to them, this is before he goes to heaven, Right? He says, Jesus speaks these words, okay? Now, if we have enrolled into the army of Christ and you said, I am a child of God, then you listen up. This is your rule. 
You need to do this. There's no backing down. There's no, ah, come on, that's for the pastor. I don't want to hear that. It's rubbish. It's not for the pastor. It's for you. Because I'll tell you why. Look what it says. It says, go into the world. Go. We have listened that we need to stay and be refreshed and hear on God, and that's 100% truth. But I tell you what, once we are refreshed and once we are saying, God, I am waiting for you, God, I'm giving this time to you, we need to understand your calling. Beloved, listen to me. The Christian today has lost its power because they don't listen to God. They listen to man and tradition. And they say, you got to do this. Where's the power? Where is it? Where is it? We see a little bit here and there. I tell you what, you listen to me right now. We don't listen to the word of God. When God says go, and you say stay, I want to be comfortable in church. Right? And we're comfortable in these four walls. And just out here, there's people dying on the street. We're happy. Praise God. Really? Is that what it's about? Is that what the Christianity that Christ died for? Huh? You listen to me right now. We are to preach the gospel. Everyone. And you know what? We fail. Some of you might laugh and you might mock. But you're going to stand before God. I tell you what. You're going to stand before God. And God said, why didn't you speak when I told you to speak? Why were you afraid? Why? Because of man? What can man do? If God is for you. Hallelujah. If God is for you. Not man. So many times we get it wrong because we put our faith in man. But if we put our trust in Jesus, if we allow the spirit of God to change us, and mold us. You know why? We're afraid. And some of you, you know what? We're afraid. Stop being afraid. You are a child of God. You've said it. Well, live it. So go. Don't just sit there. Don't just be comfortable in church. And we come in day after day after day and we're comfortable. If we do not do this, don't expect God. Don't expect God. You pray and you're not going to be listened to because you don't do the will of God. I don't do the will of God. So if you want for God to listen, you better smarten up. You better listen to the word of God and listen very true. Because he says, preach the gospel, preach the word of power, the Christ who was crucified, who gave you life. Not to sit there, like wake up. So many times we sit there and we're just sleeping on there. Wake up, all of you, it doesn't matter who you are. From the top to the bottom, in the name of Jesus, you get up. And you see the commission. This is what we are told to do. That we go to preach the gospel to everybody. Stop being selective. That's what we do. We're selective. Oh, I don't know. I can't really talk to them. In the name of Jesus, you have boldness and you speak to that person. If you're at school, don't be afraid. You speak to that person. Wherever you go, speak and preach the word. I'll tell you what. If we really grab the hold of this truth. Beloved church, listen to me. This is not a game. This is not a gimmick. But I wanted you to be absolutely firm, convinced that this is the reality that needs to be. And the church has lost it because we're comfortable. We've got it all. We've got houses and cars and money and everything. We don't need faith. We don't need to, to do this sort of stuff. But we do. And we've lost that power, that power that says, in the name of Jesus, get up. And we sit there and we say, oh, poor thing. What can I do for him? Why not pray for him? Why not do something? And he says, look at this, beloved, listen to me, that the one that believes and will be baptized, what does it say? They'll be saved. Hallelujah. We're called to to reach out, to reconcile, to save those that are lost. Don't just sit there and say, I'll surpass this job. You, every single one of you, from the kids, you're called and we're called as children of God to minister to spread the news, to say it. And so many times we're afraid, but do not be afraid for God is with us. Now, I read this next part. Beloved, listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. Do we believe God's word? Do we believe God's word? I'll tell you what, I believe God's word. And if God said it, he meant it. If you don't believe it, you better believe it. Because maybe your faith needs to be challenged. Maybe you need to ask yourself the question, why do you do the things that you do? Because here it says, these signs, yata semnele karevo. These are the signs that will. In other words, you need to have signs. And I hate it when people preach and say you don't need to have signs. Rubbish. 
You need to be empowered by the Spirit of God and walk in a way that honours God. Now, are you going to do this every time? No. But when you walk in the Spirit, whatever the need of that person is, you will meet that need. You will meet that need. Look what it says here. Very, very uh, direct. It says, these signs will accompany those who what? Those who what? Say it. Believe. And you said, I'm a believer. I'm a child of God. So if you're a child of God, don't wait on the pastor. Don't wait on anybody else. You do it. And I mean, you need to get yourself right with God. You need to have a relationship with Him. We don't do this out of a wishy-washiness or something uh, quick at hand, but we need to do this with all confidence in Christ Jesus. Now it says, in my name you will cast out demons. And we're afraid. But we have the power and authority in the name of Jesus. He is greater than anything else. right? And it says, you will speak new tongues. They will pick up serpents and if they... Um, have deadly poison, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick. Oh, hang on a sec. I thought only pastors are supposed to do that. What does it say here? Believers. Believers. Are you a believer? So many times we're a little bit afraid. I want to tell you, this is the word of God. You want to challenge me? Challenge me. That's fine. But I, I stand on the word of God. You, talk, you bring it up with God. You bring it up with God. I'm reading the word of God. And it says, those that believe. Now I tell you what, so many times we don't believe. It's easier to say God's will, uh, somewhere up there in the sky, than for us to believe on God. If God said it, He meant it. Do you know there's probably about 15 verses in the Bible that says, if you believe, if you ask, it will give, be given to you. Did you know that? And we treat it lightly. Oh, no, that's, you know, that's, we, we don't want to get there. We don't want to mess with that. We don't want to do that. And so, if we read in Mark 16, it continues on in 19. It says, So then, when the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into the heaven and sat at the right hand of God. And they went out preaching everywhere. That's exactly what they did. When God told them, they went. When God tells you, what do you do? Oh, but we just need, it. We need to learn more. We just need to spend more time with God. They went. They absolutely went. And they preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them. And look at the next part. And confirmed the word by what? By what? By signs. Signs are not nothing else but to confirm the work of God, to empower. It's to say, you know what? That there is the Holy Spirit of God that is living inside you that is guiding you, that is empowering you. And when people look at you, they go, wow, glory to God. Because surely that ain't a man. Glory to God. And that's what we are called to, to give glory to God, not to man, not to rise ourselves up above anything else. We need to walk with God and we need to walk in this faith. Can you imagine what church would be like if every single day that we were led and walked in the Spirit and had faith and we saw a need and we met that need and we prayed and people got healed and the, the dead were raised alive, the sick were healed. How would church be? And so many times we're tired and we're exhausted because we don't work the way that God wants. We don't work in the economy of heaven. We work in our own ways. And I want to challenge you tonight that you see this reality. Jesus said in Matthew 17 with 19, he said, Then the disciples came to him privately and they said, Lord, why couldn't we cast this demon out? Right? And this is about uh, a boy that was possessed, a young man that threw himself in the fire and so forth. And he was... Uh, tormented and he, Jesus says to them he says because of your little faith he says because of your little faith you know and um, and he says for truly I say to you if you have faith the size of a what mustard seed Whew, that's a small seed that's a very small seed if you have faith as small as a mustard seed you will what you pray to the mountain what are you gonna do you speak to it See, this is something new. We don't really speak to things, do we? We just pray and we hope that God does it. Guys, God doesn't work on wishes. He works on faith. He works on prayer. He works on intent. He wants us to step in faith. When you come before God, you walk in faith boldly into his throne. Not by wishy-washiness. You come in faith. And so it's the same thing here, that we come in faith. And he says, you will tell that mountain, go, and it will go. And nothing will be, what? Impossible. Oh, but what about this situation? Nothing. Do we believe God's word? 
You know, sometimes maybe we're asking ourselves, do we really believe God's word? And we say, yeah, we do. But look at the word of God. This is, this is Jesus' words. And I look at it and I think, you know what? The disciples, did you know, they actually cast out demons and healed the sick before this? And so this happened and, and they couldn't cast this particular demon? And I thought to myself, why couldn't they have this much faith as they had before when they were working, right? And think about it. The Spirit of God had not yet been and fallen afresh. That's one of the reasons why. That's what, that's what it come down to. John 14, 12 says, Truly, truly, I say to you, the one who believes in me, the works I do, he will also do. Again, this is the words of Jesus. Like, I've been challenged by this. Beloved, listen to me. I'm not trying to make anything out of this more than it is, but it is the word of God and I'm believing it. And it says, right, he's saying that whatever works that Jesus has done, you are going to do if you believe. Do you, I mean, just think of the gravity of that. Think of how serious, you know, we need to get good with God, to believe God at his word. And he says, you know what? You are going to greater, even more. And why do we doubt and we live these defeated lives? I'm sick of it. Don't you want more of the presence of God, of the spirit of God to raise you up? To get you from that situation to realize the word is life. And as you dwell in the Father and as you dwell in Jesus, the Holy Spirit fills you and empowers you and gets you up from that seat to see that when someone's lost, I've got to tell them, I've got to preach it. I can't keep this, this fire, I can't keep this reality to me, I can't be selfish. I've got to tell them. And we hold back. We hold back because we're afraid. Who cares if you're afraid? It's not about you. Stop being selfish. Think of the lost souls out there that are dying. I'm telling this to myself because I see that as well. You know, we are human, but we need to rely on the presence of God who transforms and changes our hearts. And in, in the 13th verse, he says, And whatever you ask in my name. What does whatever mean? Whatever. There's no, there's no bound. There is no limit. We, in our mind, we put a limit. But God says, whatever you ask in my name, in the name of Jesus, praise his name because there is power. Listen to me. I know that I may be excited. I may be speaking louder, but I want you to get a hold of this. There is power in the name of Jesus. He sets people free. He delivers those who are brokenhearted. And if tonight you are brokenhearted, if tonight you have had enough of playing God and playing you know, church and doing this sort of stuff, I want you to stand firm and I want you to be real and, and just ask yourself, be honest with yourself, come before God. And as we realise that when we ask something in His name, he says that I will do it so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And it says, if you ask me anything in my name, there's that again. If you ask me anything, it will be done. No, it may be done. It will. It will. When something says no, you say yes in the name of Jesus. If you're a child of God, you speak life. You spend time in prayer. You spend time with God, but you declare life. Stop living a defeated Christianity. Christ didn't die for a cheap, watered-down gospel that we sit in church warming chairs. He wants us out there because if out there we're effective, the power of God is made manifest and glory to God will be not to us, not to us. That's what's important. That's the desire of God that I want to share with you. Now, John 16 with 23, again, I want to just reiterate it. In that day, you will not ask me anything. But truly I say to you, anything you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. And I'll tell you why the Father will give it to us. I'll tell you why. He says here, until now, you have not asked anything in my name. But now he says, ask. Step in boldness. Ask, ask Jesus and you will receive. Listen to me. These are the words of Jesus again. If you don't want to believe it, that's your problem. You're going to stand before God. You are going to stand, not me. You will. No one's going to hold your hand, but I want you to be firm convinced this is the word that is speaking to you right now. And it says, ask and you will receive. So what? That your joy may be complete. Hallelujah. So that you have joy. You know when you ask God, you say, God, bring healing to that person. And it happens. What do you do? Woo! Hallelujah. When you see someone set free from demons, what do you say? Hallelujah! And you laugh. Don't you laugh, young man. Don't you laugh. 
Listen to me. There are spirits that are fighting right now against your souls. You listen very carefully. There are spirits that are fighting, but the Holy Spirit is stronger than all. And if you want to humble yourself, if you want to take God seriously, don't wait. Don't play games with God. Don't play church with God. Be real and be honest with God. And the Spirit of God will transform, will change your heart, will impart His Spirit that will raise you up and lift you up. And I love this verse, John 15, 7. If you remain in me, beloved, listen to me. If we stay in Jesus, if we just stay in Jesus, in the presence of God, you know, in the fellowship of God, right? He's, he's the source of our power. He's the one that we're connected to. And it says, if my words remain in you, in other words, if you're obedient, you listen to what I'm telling you. This is a key. It says again, ask whatever you desire, whatever you wish, and it will be done. If we remain in Christ, if we have a relationship with God, when we ask, we will receive. We will receive. I want us just to take this hold and, you know, stop Stop preaching the devil's gospel. Listen to me very carefully. Stop preaching the devil's gospel. You know what that is? It can't happen. It can't happen. You know what? This is the reality. We say, yes, God can do it. And all things are possible. But then when it comes to us, the devil says, for you, it can't happen. Look at your life. Look at this. Look at that. Don't preach the devil's gospel. Don't speak negative things into your life like this that it cannot happen. Because in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the most powerful name on the face of this universe, there is no other name. No other name. And I want to just declare that because it is by His power that we are saved. We stand here because of Jesus. Not because of my merit, not because of who I am, but because of what he has done on the cross. He has saved you, reached out to you. And so this is the commission, beloved, I'm going to end here, right? Is that we are called to be the light. Listen to me, we're called to be the light. We're called to go out there to preach the gospel. And you know what? When we do that, when we do that and say, God, I just, you know, put that desire in my heart to reach the lost. What happens is, you know, these signs accompany. In other words, the things that will happen to us when we truly have faith in God, those signs will come through. Now, whether they come through in different means and different ways, that's okay. But it's about us being able to preach and preach it with the power of God. Not the power of man. Don't try to preach it on your own strength. But say, God, give me wisdom and understanding. Holy Spirit, fill me. That when I speak, I speak life. That that person, he needs Jesus. And we're afraid. We're afraid because we're thinking about ourselves. You know, too many times we want to learn. And we're saying, I want to learn. I want to learn. You know, we come to church. I want to learn. I want to pray. I want to do these things. And and you know what? When are we going to grow up? Can I say? When are we going to grow up? When are we going to learn? When's enough of learning to say, let's put this into practice? I mean, you think about the disciples. What do they do? You see, we study in the Greek way of study. You know what the Greek way of study is? Okay, you go to school for three years. Once you finish three years of school, then you will qualify to be an engineer and so forth. But you have no experience. You have no experience. You have no idea what that is about. The Hebrew way of of study is like an apprenticeship where they get someone on board and they say, hey, this is what you need to do. This is how you need to do it. And you see the disciples who were, who were, you know, fishermen. They were average people. They were people that, you know, like yourself and I. They're not someone that were eloquent and, and, you know, really up there. But they just humbled themselves. They were hungry for God and said, Jesus, I will follow you. I'll drop everything. God, I'm going to follow you. I don't care about this world. I don't care about the things that can entice me. Because, the, because you, Jesus, are worth more than anything to me. Lord, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. This was their heart. And so I want to challenge you in this evening. I want you to stand to your feet. I want you to stand to your feet. And I want you to be honest with God. You be honest with God. It's between you and God, not between anybody else, not between your wife and you know, husband and wife, none of this. Between you and God, be honest with God. And just absolutely be real. Say, Lord, we want that you increase our faith, that you sanctify us in your truth, that you make this reality. Lord, give us boldness. Give us boldness to be activated into your, into your uh, calling. Each and every one of us, if we have said we're children of God, we need to live like children. Children of the light. We are children of the light. Let's live like that. Let's live like that. Because the Bible says that as a body and a spirit, right, when they're combined, it is alive. But when the spirit leaves the body, what happens? The body is dead. So faith without works is dead. 
We, our faith is in Jesus Christ alone, but we need to do the work of the one who sent us, of Jesus Christ. He has commissioned. He has empowered. He has given you all the tools. He's given you everything. It's for up to us now to say, yes, Lord Jesus, I am the one. Like Isaiah said, Lord, here I am. Send me. Who will go? Who will stand up? Who will tell their neighbour that, that Jesus loves them? Who will reach out? Especially as we celebrate Easter, as we celebrate the birth of Lord, uh, the the death of our Lord Jesus, as we commemorate that, who will go out? And I pray that God puts it on your heart, that a holy fire just stirs it within you and the Spirit of God awakens you to say, I want to be that person. I want to be that person. Lord, I want to follow you. I said I'll follow you, but maybe you've slipped away. In the name of Jesus, you get up. In the name of Jesus, you get up. Don't stay where you are. Get up and serve God. If you're not right with God, get right with God. Allow the Holy Spirit of God to minister to you, to, f- to bring forgiveness to you. Right now, I want us to come before God. Let's pray in faith. Let's believe on God. If we ask, He is faithful and He will listen. I believe that. We read these verses. Let's believe God had His Word. And let's thank God for tonight.